Once it's in your mind, it's infectious. So fight for your life and reject it. You better give me space, I'm protected. My adrenaline spikes when I'm threatened. And if you stay in my way, I'm aggressive. Cause when there's no legs, it'll kill when I'm desperate. and what's going on y'all i apologize i am late i was trying to get these photos uploaded because you know me i got on here you know went to mma junkie and forgot that you know they all they only do the uh video for pay-per-view and you know like last change of cheddar i was trying not to get shut down this week so i am about 20 minutes late so I do apologize. I beg your forgiveness. But I appreciate each and every single one of you for stopping by right over here tonight for Change the Cheddar. Change the Cheddar for UFC 299 Sugar, Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera, number two. And thank you, D-Rose. Thank you. And what we are trying to do here is obviously we want to turn some change, you know, $10 or less into some into some cheddar baby that is our goal so as always my name is matt d rose is on that side of your screen this is the uh golden octagon i guess we're gonna go to knock the mma podcast today since me and d rose tagged up uh how you been doing uh since wednesday d rose let the people know and then we'll get into the chat my guy uh man things been things been great this way getting getting amped up for this weekend you know like i said big big fight card coming up and uh you know, hit a, hit a couple NBA bets, you know, since you won, you know, get, trying to get a little builder, but got a little cute with one of my bets and tried to bet uh, Anthony Joshua for the eighth round to start and for him to win against Francis Ngannou. Um, instead, we watched go Francis go into a forever slumber. And that was a uh, man. That was that was really rough to watch. I couldn't I couldn't believe that. Yeah, dude, I'm actually glad that you brought that up because, dude, you've been sitting here watching me upload this like stuff for the past 20 minutes now. <laughs> I like, I know you've just been ready to start, but I've just, been, I have to upload this so we don't get shut down. Yeah, but uh, I'm actually glad that you brought that up because, dude, I've never even seen a punch even like phase Francis, not even a little bit. Like you know, and he's been just hit by some big heavyweights, and dude. To see him melt like that, I was like, dude, that is some serious power to put Francis down like that. Absolutely nuts. Kind of hurts seeing big Francis fall, but, you know, I'm ready for him to come back to MMA. Uh, but, man, after that, whew, I don't even know. Uh, but, yeah. Well, and think about it, too. Like, the guy that he's supposed to fight, Hennon Ferreira, in, in uh, PFL, I mean, I'm not saying, like, he's – a world beater, but that dude's freaking six nine, and he's an absolute savage. So, like, it's not like Francis is just going to get thrown a tomato can once he comes right back. He's going to get fed this absolute monster who is also KOing people in like thirty seconds. So, um, yeah, he's going to have his hands full if he does decide to come back. But you're right, that was that was hard to watch Francis get absolutely stiped like that. Yeah, dude, it's dude. I don't know anything about boxing, but I know that like I was not expecting that. I'm sure a lot of boxing fans were. Uh, but hey, this isn't what why why we're here for. We're here for UFC 299, our final post weigh in, our picks, our bets, our parlays. The rose. Well, do you do you have any pick flips at all? I know I personally don't have any. I have some ones that I'm still not confident on. Uh, do you have any pick flips? Uh, I'm still back and forth on Marina Moreau's and, and, and JoJo. Like as far as, I mean, I know I picked JoJo, but, uh, but damn, like I'm, I'm pretty close to, no, nah, I, nah, I don't want to throw that in there, but I, I'm probably going to end up laying some money on JoJo just because the line, man. I mean, um, I, I don't know. Like I want to say Marina Moreau's, but I just, I just don't, I can't pull the trigger. Not at that line anyway. Not at that line. All right. 
All right, fair enough. Uh, so let's get into the chat real quick. D-Rose, I, once again, I do apologize for being late. We got Lush Lomain change to chatter. Let's go. Appreciate you stopping by tonight, Lush. Thank God uh, I can't bet or else uh, change to chatter would be a whole lot of me because happy Friday, everyone. We made it. Indeed, we did, Austin. Thank goodness it is Friday. Uh, boss, uh, this is from Lush. Boss told me I got to work tomorrow, but I'll be off at 4 p.m. Uh, for the first fight, doesn't start until seven. Let's go, Glush. Hell that, yeah, uh, Hell brother. Yeah. You got you, yeah. you. You got like three hours to come home. You know, open up your like your fan duel, get a few last minute bets in. You know, do what you got to do, Lush. Get your shower <laughs> in real quick. You know, hey, because I get off. Hey, Lush. Same thing. I get off at five o'clock tomorrow, so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be trying to hide from a customer about you know four o'clock or so, so I can uh, so I can get up on out of there, man. Yeah, because I'm the same way, trying to get straight to the crib so I can get ready. And Austin telling Lush, no need to fake me and sick now. <laughs> what's going on, Derek? Appreciate you stopping by tonight. Austin saying, what's going on to Derek? Uh, uh, Lush saying, what's going on, Derek? Uh, uh, Edgar saying, let's go, Cheeto. Edgar, I think. Did you buy something from me on eBay earlier? If so, uh, I package it up, and that'll uh, probably go out Monday because I don't like to drop stuff off in my post office mailbox because, you know, who knows what happens there. So I'll send that out Monday. My guy, we got Daniel Aker. Big weekend for the boys coming up indeed, and with the money, with the money tongue, D-Rose. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. Let's get this chat this weekend. Edgar Hernandez, let's go. O'Malley says Manny Alvarez. Uh, we, 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 got, we got some back and forth in the chat and uh, from D-Rose. So this was, you know, I was I was almost done at this point. D-Rose letting everyone know we'll be ready at 1020. And, uh, okay, uh, Lush saying take your time. Everyone just responding. And we got Derek Goofrey gifting a membership to someone in the chat. So shout out, to you. You, know, you know, for gifting a membership to someone in, in the chat. I know that means a ton because a lot of people would like to be, like, members, but, you know, they don't. They don't have five bucks a month, I guess. You know, uh, you know, and I can't judge anyone's finances. So we appreciate you stopping by and gifting a membership. And I'm sure Lush will let me know it is indeed Jay Wolf. That's your second time getting a membership. So Jay Wolf got a membership. He probably <laughs> popped out uh, because uh, we were taking so long. But I'm sure he'll be back in here. And uh, uh, he'll be stoked to know that he got another membership, D-Rose. So without any further ado... Let's get into uh, these fights. Bottom to top, uh, first card of the night, all the way to the main card. And uh, you guys will see, you know, what I have been taking so long and why I was late here uploading <laughs> these damn photos. And then uh, at the end, I'll give you uh, some parlays that I've made. We've got some, I, I've got a prelim one that will pay for the pay per view plus a little bit more. I've got. A two leg, I mean, I've got a three leg and then I've got a four leg, and then I think I've got two change of cheddars. And not only that, my guy D Rose sent me two personal parlays that he made on FanDuel, so we'll get into those as well at the end of the show. And then I've got 15 cards for the predict the fight this week. That uh, D Rose, I would let you predict, but if you don't pick the main event, then uh. We're going to have a problem. So it's going to be the main event this weekend for the Predict the Fight. Uh, yeah, so with that being said, we got uh, Lawn Care Pros LLC. Awesome card tomorrow night, guys. Can't wait. Me either, brother. Uh, I am personally excited. I am a huge Sugar Sean O'Malley fan, and this pay-per-view as a whole is just absolutely stacked. So with that being said, let's get into it. First fight of the night, we do have... Joanne Wood. Let me get this banner off the screen so we can see the lower abs there. We've got Joanne Wood or Joanne Calderwood taking on none other than Marina Moroz. Dude, Marina Moroz looking kind of jacked up there. These are morning weigh-in photos. That's what I did. Took a picture of the morning weigh-in photos, and then at the ceremonial face-offs is this photo right here. So uh, Marina Rose looks about an inch taller, looks to be well more muscled, well more in shape, just younger overall D Rose. And um, I know it's not perfect, but you know that takes time to upload each one of those for ev for every single one of these fourteen fights. So that's twenty eight photos for each one of them, and then another fourteen 
and then Marab in, in there too. I, I have Marab in here for, for some reason <laughs> <laughs> as well. So uh, Marina Moreau's Joanne Wood, dude. Um, I'm really banking on Marina Moreau's here because I didn't know it, but I feel like, dude, I went to my local casino or, um, or, uh, earlier lost 400 bucks first of all so not proud of myself for that but within, but within that 400 bucks i did um bet some uh ufc fights but what i'm upset at myself about is i think i have six tickets and in i think no five tickets and in three of the five tickets i have marina moreau's either finish under 1.5 marina moreau's one or two or Marina Moreau's submission uh, round one, I think. So I think I'm really banking on Marina Moreau's to get this. I really oh. loved it this week, dude. I'm not proud of myself, but Joanne Wood is retiring, dude. And I know we make fun of the, you know, the finger popping online and uh, all that, dude. But it's damn near a 10-year age difference, I think. I think Joanne Woods 38, like Marina's 32, so like eight years difference. You know, still, still close to quite a bit. You know, six years. I can't math right now, but yeah, give me the younger, taller, more fit, more tan Marina Moreau's to submit Joanne Wood in a uh, round number one. D Rose, which way are you going here this week? Uh, yeah, I think just in terms of you know betting wise here. That that line for Marina Moreau's that minus 240 money line is just just not enough for me. So I can see why you're you're wanting to lean towards submission because if there is a way that uh, I appreciate JoJo you, D Rose, lose, for do you mind telling me telling everyone like the line while you're at it because I'm terrible at the, telling the line until the end in yeah. my bets. Yeah, yeah. So Marina Moreau's is minus two forty money line, and and Joanne Wood is plus one ninety four. So, uh, so I can see why you want to try to find that submission to get a little bit more juice for your squeeze. Uh, so you can get Marina Moreau's if you want to do a submission combo round yeah. one or two. You're looking at plus, plus four nine. Yeah, no. So, I, I mean it. that that's that's damn strong. But for me, I just for some reason I just cannot make myself pull the trigger on. On uh, Marina Moreau's here, so for me, honestly, I really just like the the line where where Joanne is, is at right now. I think you can maybe try to get you a little uh, get you a little underdog started early on and try to uh, get a little builder to maybe maybe add on to it. And um, and yeah, for me, I, I'm I'm going to stick with uh, Joanne here by decision. Uh, you can get her money line at plus one ninety four. You want to get a little frisky and put uh put by decision. Joanne Wood plus four twenty. I mean that's you know that's pretty solid odds for for a way of victory that I think will probably be the only way she'll get it. So, um, but for me, yeah, I'm still going to stick with Joanne Wood. Fair enough, fair enough. What's going on, Congressman Masvidal? I appreciate you stopping by tonight. You know, and uh, you know, hope you get elected soon, brother. Uh, <laughs> we uh, so uh, D Rose on the. Um, on the underdog, the uh, plus 194 dog in Joanne Wood, and he likes the prop of plus 420 uh, Joanne Wood by points. I am on the favorite of uh, Marina Moreau's minus 240, and I personally like the prop of submission round one or two at plus 490. So moving on, D. Rose. Um Next fight of the night, we do have Asu Amabayev taking on <laughs> CJ Vergara. <laughs> CJ Vergara today was the only fighter to miss weight. He weighed 127 pounds, so he missed weight by uh, one single pound, you know, missed the 126 pound limit. But uh, they size up pretty well. And uh, I think when they were announcing, um, when Joe Rogan. Uh, I was announcing that CJ Vergara has missed weight, you know, uh, you know, 127 pounds. Uh, uh, his uh, exact word was like, fuck all that shit. <laughs> he just like fucking squared up. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> squared up to uh, Asu Omabayev. Uh, I think you feel a lot more strongly on this fight than uh, than I personally do. I just, uh, I've got Asu Omabayev money line. Uh, 
minus 560, dude. He's a huge favorite. CJ Vergara plus 420. But uh, yeah, I don't. I. I I, I guess I just don't know enough about Asu Amabayev yet to uh, to be putting him in a lot of uh, his – to be putting props of his in parlays. Will I throw a minus 560 in there, you know, just to, you know, put, like add some more line to a seven leg? Sure, why not? But uh, do I have him in a ton of other ones? Nah, not really because I'm not too confident. But I am going to go uh, Asu Amabayev. I like a three or decision for Asu Amabayev, and that is plus 120. I'll take that. Uh, I know you feel a different way, Dero, so let me know how you feel. Uh, Yeah, I I mean, for me personally, you know, if you look at the, as you said, the money line for Asu Amabayev right now is minus 560. Uh, the return on CJ Vergara is plus 420. You can give it CJ Vergara, but uh, I still like Asu Amabayev to get the fight done uh but that minus 560 is just way too heavy of a line to play so for me personally i'm going to want to um i'm going to want to try to get a little bit more juice from a squeeze out of this so if you look at asu amabayo's uh history he is very known for getting the the rear naked choke and none of his submissions have ever gone past the third round like all his submissions that he's gotten have been either in the first or second round uh, so for me, I'm going to love to play that uh, that assume I'm a buy of submission round combo on FanDuel, and you can get submission round combo round one or two for assume I'm a buy up at plus 170. Uh, that's what I'm going to be playing. And as you guys will see here in a little bit, you'll see that I actually one of my parlay pieces. Um, I'm actually going to play that as well. And uh, as you do that, I actually have to grab a charger. Because my this Chromebook set is dying real quick, so if you spare <laughs> right. me like yeah. three minutes, I'll be right back. Yeah, you're you're good, dude. Anyway, so while D Rose is uh, getting his getting his charger, I'll go full screen here, and uh, I'll, I'll see what you guys got to say. Uh, Daniel Aker just got my fighter warm patch auto Sanhagen. Thanks to TGO perks of being a member. I appreciate you, Daniel. One for being a member, and you know, glad you got your patch. I know uh, Lush got his package today uh, as well. I had some uh, Notre Dame football cards for some reason. I when I'll just I just want to open up some cards, and I can't find any UFC cards. And if I'm going out to buy cards, I'm going to buy something. So uh, I just buy some football cards and I know Lush is a Notre Dame fan. So if I ever get any Notre Dame cards, I'll send them to Lush. And he also got uh the Santiago Ponza Nibio uh patch. So or not patch the uh gold auto uh one of one I was reading the thing and uh silent six member for one month one more sleep you beautiful MFers round three Cheeto gets slept. I am with you silent six. I hope it happens uh, dude, Cheeto looked awful, but we'll get into it. Uh, Congressman Masvidal, what do you, uh, what do you think is up with uh, Cheeto? What man, I can't read. What do you think is up with the Sean and Cheeto DMs? D Rose is back, by the way. Uh, and why won't they show them to anyone? I mean, personally, I'm not showing my DMs to anyone. Uh, like you know, like I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I got to meet Sandman in uh, 298. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I don't know, dude. I, I got my pack today. Super happy with my first gold. That's what's up, Lush. I'm glad you got that, brother. Anyway, so moving on along. Uh, D-Rose on the Asu Amabaya of round one, round two sub. I don't feel too hot about it. I'm more on one money line or round three or decision. So next fight of the night, we've got uh, Robelis de Spain. D-Rose, the names I was calling him earlier on the podcast in the week were absolutely horrendous. <laughs> but uh, he, it, it is Robelis de Spain, and he is going to be taking on this uh, lump of lard. That is Josh Parisian, dude. God, he looks awful. And, dude, just look at the absolute size difference in this. I still can't believe that even after seeing this, you want to lay money on Josh Parisian, dude. I just, I, I personally can't believe it. Uh, I am very high on a uh, Robelis to Spain round one KO, but I mean Robelis to Spain, uh, money line right now minus three thirty five. Josh Parisian two seventy. 
Robelis uh, de Spain round one KO on FanDuel is two, 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 minus 165. So uh, give me the Robelis de Spain round one KO. <laughs> and you can find that, D Rose, under the method of victory and then scroll down and, and then. Uh, it's under method and round combo. Robelis to Spain, round one KO, uh, minus 165. I'm pretty sure that's that's what happens, dude. This dude is giant. <laughs> A Taekwondo medalist, dude. What what can you say here? I mean, can you tell the people why you think that possibly putting some money on Josh Parisian might be a good idea here this weekend? Uh, cause I'm not saying that Josh Parisian is the is the greatest fighter in the world, but uh, but if you go back and look at Robelis de Spain's opponents, um, his last four, uh, I believe their only fights are <laughs> like against him. Uh, I mean they might have some other experience. I know, uh, and most of them are like some weird like Taekwondo rule type fights or something like that. So, um. But I I don't know. For me personally, just not having the UFC experience, I just experienced last week Javid Basharat, who was a highly touted prospect at a minus 800 uh, line. And a lot of people lay a lot of money on him. I did end up playing him round three or decision in one bet, and he ended up losing that one for me. Um, yeah, he lost a lot of people some money last week, and it was almost right there as big of a line as that was just just – take a guy who's been in the UFC and had that experience just a little bit longer. Um, and that's just how I'm feeling with Josh Parisian here, man. I just think that um, I want to ride with the UFC experience here and I'm just riding with the line. Um, one of the famous quotes from, from John Anik that I hear from him all the time is, is to bet the line, not the fighter. And um, in this case, I just don't want to overthink it here. So at Josh Parisian plus 270, um, yeah, that's, that's that's worth a ten for me to get a return on on thirty seven bucks if he is able to uh, if he is able to pull it off so um, so yeah I, I think that that for me is let alone worth enough to to do that for me. I was trying to find I like the meme but I couldn't dude like it like like had the dudes like side by side it like it was like taekwondo like bronze medalist you know six foot seven longest reach in UFC history. Uh, and then on the Josh Parisian side, it had uh, lost the Parker Porter, <laughs> and I just lost it. I was like, I was like, oh, D Rose is in trouble. Oh, D Rose man. is in trouble. Not Parker Porter, no, not Parker uh, Porter. Hey, that man, Parker, dude, he lost the Parker Porter. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know, but uh. Uh, not, anyway, not, so uh, not. anyway, so D Rose might have uh, some dollars on Josh Parisian this weekend. I, on the other hand, give me Robelos to Spain round one knockout. So, up next, we do have Demolador Michelle Pereira taking on Lord Mikau Olashejuk. And, dude, um, this is this is full weight cut, D, D Rose. I mean, you can't tell me this dude. In the morning at weigh-ins, you can't tell me this dude could not go down to 170. Man, he's a he's a savage though, man. I, I give him full <laughs> credit. We were we were talking about that before uh, we actually came on, and dude, he was up at 205 knocking dudes out. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> just that, just look at the size difference in them, dude. Which which their arms, their arms are are huge size difference. And I just think that's just something with there's just something in that Brazilian water that those <laughs> those Brazilians are for the most part, they are just absolutely shredded. Um versus uh a lot of times the uh uh oh shit. Joanna uh Jan uh Poland. Yes. Why did I? Why did I just forget where they're from? Yeah, the Polish fighters tend to not have as much uh, muscle definition as you look at Jan and see, but they're always badass fighters with good cardio. Um, so I think that's kind of where Mihal kind of you know prioritizes his stuff. But man, looking at that face off, dude, Mihal kind of you know he sizes up with with Michelle better than I better than I thought he would. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Ah oh, man, I just. <sighs> 
here's my thing. I do have a few bets that's going over 1.5, and now I'm just kind of scared. I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'd be more comfortable this to start round two, to be honest. Uh, currently, odds for uh, me, Cal versus me, Shell are um, – where are we at? Where'd it go? Oh, uh, plus 128 for Mikhail Olszewski and minus 152 for Michelle Pereira. The over 1.5 in this fight uh, is minus 182 to the over and plus 144 to the under. But as I said, I personally like as a parlay piece, as that's what I do over here because uh, I'm a degenerate. Uh, I like to start round two at minus 290. I think that's a solid parlay piece. But give me Michelle Pereira to knock out Mikhail Olszewski late round two, and hopefully we can get over that 1.5 uh, as well. So give me the over 1.5, the start round two, and uh, Mikhail to knock out – or Michelle to knock out Mikhail uh, late round two, D-Rose. Which way are you going here, my guy? Yeah, I mean, looking at it for me, um, whew, yeah, I'd – I'm not gonna lie, that size difference, you know. I hey, I, I got Michelle Pereira and one of my actually both my parlays that we're gonna be we're gonna be posting here here in a little bit. But I'm just you know as, as far as pulling the curtain back on that. But man, I'm not gonna lie, kind of got me second guessing a little bit because you know I'm a fan of Michal, uh Michal Olachechek, but uh, ugh. I still think that uh, Michelle Pereira's got a little bit better footwork. And I still think that he's going to be able to uh, keep the range. And he's just got a more versatile style of attack than uh, Ola Shechek does. But, uh, man, I, I'd still like the money line for uh, Michelle Pereira at, uh, at minus one, 152. And then I am with you as far as that uh, that over one and a half. Um, that's, that's probably going to be something that I – I'm going to end up throwing it in a parlay as well. Um, I, I think both guys are tough as hell. Uh, Michelle Pereira could get a knockout. Um, I still think if he does, it's going to be some over like accumulating damage because uh, uh, Ola Shechek, that dude is just absolutely tough. And dude, he really never even got knocked out at 205. Uh, he got submitted plenty, um, but he never really even got knocked out in the UFC at 205. So I can't really see a 185 and really putting him out that easily. But uh, I like that over 1.5 as well. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, our next fight is going to be uh, Iwan the Hulk Kutalaba uh, taking on uh, Felipe Lenz. For some reason, I don't know where my Felipe Lenz uh, weigh-in photo from this morning went. But Iwan Kutalaba is a minus 124 and Felipe Lenz a plus 106. And, Diaz, you were saying something about the water. Uh, dude, what on earth? Did Iwan Kutalaba drink this morning to make him change colors, dude? <laughs> well, what happened? What happened? But we do have uh, we have the face-off photo here, dude. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> do you want to let the people know what like what you're telling me right before uh, right before we <laughs> we started the stream. <laughs> That Ian Kutalaba is the most annoying fucking dude in the world, like at a weigh in. Like, he is just, he is absolutely annoying. Um, just the scream when he just gets up in the guy's face, he just, I don't know. It's just, I am so tired of the Ewan Kutalaba act. And unfortunately, he's not facing someone who could, you know, potentially put an end to that. He's maybe fighting someone who can maybe he can continue that with. But uh, but I did like the way Felipe Lenz kind of held his ground. You know, he didn't let uh, he didn't let Kutalaba kind of control that control that environment. Felipe Lenz wouldn't let him have any of it. And Dana actually had to kind of like, hey, like pat him on the chest and tell him, hey, you know, keep it moving because, uh, you know, we got a show to do. But yeah, Felipe Lenz stood his ground, so I so I liked it. But man, uh, Kutalaba just he he knows how to irk your damn nerves. That's for sure. Yeah, dude, Iwan Kutalaba. What an interesting fighter. Uh, <laughs> we got two broke for therapy. Appreciate you stopping by. Hey, I love you. You know, love you too, brother. Appreciate you stopping by, my guy. Uh, two broke for therapy. Uh, the name also. Sorry to hear that. I hope you're good, my friend. Uh, and then Ian is a goofy guy. Indeed, he, uh, he is. So how I'm personally feeling on this fight, D-Rose, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. To be honest, if... um. 
how I feel. What is my exact thoughts? If you have this fight in a DraftKings lineup, keep in mind that those lock at the beginning of the night and you can't change them. So be ready for this fight to fall out and the fight, both fighters to get zeros. Uh, if you have this in any kind of like, um, you know, uh, what are they? Fantasy lineup. So just keep that uh, in mind, D Rose. I don't feel strong about this fight e- either way. As you said, Ewan is a complete idiot and uh, he could be winning and somehow end up on the bottom and just lose, dude. So, but personally, every time I bet on him, uh, he loses. And every time I bet against them, he wins. So, Dude, I'm just going to completely stay away from this fight, but give me Felipe wins, Felipe Lins to uh, knock out Iwan Kutalaba in uh, early round number two because I think you like the the uh, to start round two, and that's not the worst play in uh, in the world. But do I think Iwan Kutalaba is a uh, smart enough man to survive until the second round? I don't because every time I played it, dude, he's lost. I think I played it in the Ryan Spann and the Johnny Walker fight, and he, or no, in the in Zetu fight the and Walker the Johnny fight. Walker fight, yeah. yeah, and 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 he got smoked in both first rounds, dude. So it's like I can't even play that, dude. So if you're playing this fight to start round two, good luck to you. I'm staying away from it. I I, I can't bet on this fight, DRS. Um. So I guess let the people know how you feel. But I'm going uh, Felipe Allen's early round two knockout. Uh, yeah, for myself, I just can't. Uh, yeah, I can't make myself pull the trigger on uh, betting either fighter. Uh, I'm just not that confident as far as the money line goes. Even though you know, is that a pick 'em? So I mean, I think it's had a pick 'em for a reason. Um, I mean. It, it, I would say Felipe Lenz is capable of a finish, but I mean, man, we haven't really seen. Uh, yeah, we've seen one finish since he's been in the UFC, and that was against OSP. So, I mean, Kuzilaba can get finished early, sure, but I don't really know what Felipe Lenz has done to, to, to show us that uh, he would be able to put Kuzilaba out so early. So, I do like that to start round two. Uh, you can get that at minus 118 right now. Um, and as far as the money line goes with them, you can get uh, Iwan Kutalaba at minus 124. You can get Felipe Lenz at plus 106. So so really at a pick them, you might as well say. Um, again, I don't feel confident on either fighter because I can see either fighter getting the win here. But, uh, but I can see Felipe Lenz, like I said, most of his fights outside of the OSP fight has gone into the second round and beyond. So, um, so I, I think to start the second round at minus 118, that's a – that's a pretty good line to put in like a uh, maybe like a short little parlay. All right. All right. D Rose, I'm just not looking at the time. We got to step on the gas for a lot of fights and we're like three or four. In. <laughs> all right. So up next, we, we got uh, the young punisher, Pedro Munoz, taking on the Matrix, Kyler Phillips. And uh, D Rose, I personally, I don't like the line too much. Plus 190, Pedro Munoz. Minus 230, Kyler Phillips. I saw this up to like minus two. 80 Kyler Phillips earlier in the week, and I was just like, Whoa, that's that's too much. It's gotten a little bit closer now. I guess Kyler Phillips wins by decision, dude. But I was looking at the start round three here, and um, dude, it uh, start round three here is minus 450. Can't even bet that, dude. So I'm like, I don't even want to put that in a parlay to be honest. Because am I confident that Kyler Phillips? can't get snoozed by the young punisher Pedro Munoz. No, I'm just not. Dude, this, this personally I think this fight should be minus minus 110 a piece to be honest. Uh if I was betting this fight, I would bet Pedro Munoz, but I really I uh, maybe Kyler Phillips 3 or decision because I think he wins, but at minus 230 it should, I don't really like it. Um if I was betting this fight, I would be betting Pedro. But give me Kyler Phillips to win this fight via decision. What's your thoughts here on uh, on this this one, D Rose? Well, yeah, I I think uh, I think for me, you know, I think that's that's going to be about how I play it too. I think for for me, I think Kyler Phillips he has the striking, has the the distance management, the range. Um, he's got some finish ability, but Pedro Munoz has never been finished before in his career, never been knocked out, never been submitted. So he's super tough, super durable. 
Um, but I think he has a tough time finding his range. So I think he's just going to be walking into a lot of shots. Um, I think Kyler Phillips has finished ability, but again, Pedro ain't the dude to play uh, games with like that. So I think uh, I think Kyler Phillips is a winning by decision here. Um, I'm going to play Kyler Phillips by on money line and maybe like a parlay piece or two uh, at minus two thirty. You can get him at, but uh, but I think uh, you know for him a decision at, at minus one fifteen. Uh, not that much <laughs> more juice, but the most likely way to go. So I'm gonna go that way. Might be uh, your uh, peach lemon hole. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, I think if he wins, I mean, Pedro, he just doesn't get finished, man. The dude's so tough. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, what's going on, Daniel? Appreciate you stopping by tonight, brother. <laughs> Asking if you pulled any one on ones. Uh, man's out of place with the crazy. Is minus five hundred? No one on ones. Got a bow nickel color blast and a white spark. Jesus Christ, dude, that's absolutely nuts. He just gets so much crazy shit. Um, yeah, so uh, up next, we do have uh, Rafael Dos Anjos taking on uh, Gamer Matus Gamrot. Currently, odds for this are minus 450 for Matus Gamrot, and uh, Rafael Dos Anjos is plus 350. Um, I'm going to keep this one rather short and sweet here d rose i like uh matus gamrot i like the three or decision prop at minus 210 uh but dude something about this fight tells me that i should not bet that three or decision prop something tells me this week that uh matus gamrot might get his like first ufc finish over like the really old rafael dos anjos at this point i don't know why so I think in most of my parlays, I've just been doing Matus Gamera money line just to be safe, dude, because I like him to win the fight. Am I sure that he doesn't finish RDA? Dude, I'm not. I and I and I don't know why. I know RDA is a tough, he's a vet, he's an old dog, hard to finish, dude. But I'm getting a little hairs on the back of my neck that says that Matus Gamrot's probably gonna finish RDA this weekend. But give me Matus Gamrot, I like the three or decision uh, the most here. Uh, which way are you going here, D Rose? Uh, yeah, and that and the big thing for me is that money line is, is such a such a steep line. It's just hard to it's hard to convince me to play it. You know, Gamrot at minus four fifty. I do think that you know I do think he wins. I don't think there's any controversy there. Uh, so you just want to try to find a little bit more juice for your squeeze. Uh, for me, oh gosh, even at the double chance, uh, Mataj Gamrot KO TKO are on points. You're looking at uh, minus three forty, and that's just that's that's going to be a tough play, man. That's going to be a very tough play. Uh, you can get Gamrot at points at minus one fifty five, uh, but to me, I am kind of with you there as far as that goes. You know, I could see potentially. A uh, a later finish. He and he has had knockouts in the UFC before. Before uh, I think Scott Holtzman and and uh, your boy Diego Fajardo. So, but I, but you I, know I, that's 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 not RDA, and I I don't even count Diego Fajardo as a UFC fighter, dude. Like he claims to be a UFC fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but I do uh, that Mataj Gamrot uh, round three or decision. That's probably going to be what I play. I'm gonna play that and the decision. But uh, but you are right that that finish potentially hanging in the balance there. That's a little it's a little tricky. Yeah, dude. I don't I don't I don't know why I'm just getting a little the little tingles that it could happen this weekend. So up next we do have Macy, the future barber, taking on Caitly, Caitly, <laughs> Caitlin Chiku uh, or Camarina, Camarina, Camarinera, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, anyway, Kate, Caitlin Chukagian is uh, seems to be about three, four inches taller. Going to have the height and reach advantage. Also going to be about, I, I think, seven, eight years older than Macy Barber. If not getting closer to uh, to ten, man. But you know how it goes. This the grass is green. The sky is blue. Kayla Jukagian wins by decision. That's the way I'm going here this week. Currently, odds are plus 172 Kayla Jukagian and minus 200 is Macy Barber. Um, if you want the Kayla Jukagian via decision, that is plus 250. I like that. And Kayla Jukagian, 
three or decision. If you just want to be safe and think she gets her first ever finish, it's plus 210. But give me Caitlin Chukagian. I like the money line, dude. Just give me the money line, Caitlin Chukagian, plus 172. Uh, but, you know, her to win via points, which is pretty much how she wins always, plus 250. Uh, yeah, I like that. Caitlin Chukagian, plus 250 by points. I like it. I like it. Uh, am I going to bet it? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. That's going to be pretty tricky, man. I'm still going to stick with Macy Barber here. I, st- I like the confidence that she's kind of came in with. She's given Caitlin all the respect in the world, but, you know, has said that, yeah, and I, I agree, man. I, I You know, she has m- mentioned multiple times that, the way that you finish Shukagian or Marinara, as uh, as I like to call her, uh, I believe it's Sermonera to be to be correct. But uh, the way that you finish her is that you put pressure in her face and you get after her. And Macy Barber has made that very clear that she's going to kind of get after her and and want to try to put the pressure on Shukagian to uh, to make a fight uh, a gritty fight. And uh, Macy can get into that dog fight, man. So I'm going to try to cut it a little bit safe with that round three or decision. I know she got that finish against He Boss late in the second round, but it was very close to the start of the third round there. And I think uh, Chikagian, she, she's very tough, man. She's not going to be easy to get out of there. So I'm going to say uh, round three or decision for Macy Barber, and you can get that right now, minus 125. So I want to play that. And I'm not going to go too crazy because Chikagian is a tough matchup. But uh, I'm not mad at that minus 200 for Macy Barber either. That's kind of like a line that's that's – just at that point enough to me where I could put it in a parlay. So I might be looking at both of those. All right. All right. So me and Dero split on this one. Dero's on the favorite in uh, Macy Barber, and I am on the uh, the dog in Kaylin UK again this week. So it is time for the main event of the prelims, the Rose. That is Curtis Razor Blades taking on Malhadeno, Jelton Almeida, dude. And they size up, dude, pretty well, dude. I guess I just thought Curtis Blades was going to have, I don't know, a size advantage, and he doesn't. Usually here, usually here, two sixty five, or you know, two sixty or whatever he normally weighs, and I, I think he weighed in a little bit less, but. Um, yeah, he's a little bit more toned down than what you're used to seeing Curtis Blades too, though. Yeah, even like even height, I guess. I just expected him to be, you know, a solid two inches taller, and he's just. He's just not, dude. I don't I don't know. It's just kind of throwing me off just a little bit, which makes me feel better about my plays of a uh, Jelton Almeida probably gonna finish Curtis Blades like he finished everyone before the Derek Lewis fight. And I think uh, like a lot of people are just down on Jelton Almeida after that uh after that Derek Lewis fight. So currently odds for this um are Jelton Almeida minus 118, Curtis Blades plus one hundred. The prop that I personally like here is Jelton Almeida round one or two at plus 220. I'll take that all day. That is something that I do have far laid up this weekend. Jelton Almeida plus 220 round one or two. I think it happens. He's going to finish Curtis Blades. going to come out there, front kick him, take him down, and either Donkey Kong him or Curtis Blades going to turn around and he's going to give up his neck. Jelton Almeida probably round one finish, but – uh I like that round one or two just, just to be safe. Which way are you going here, Dearest? Uh, Yeah, man. I think for me, uh, I mean, that, you know, you can get jail and I made a money line at minus 118. Curtis Blades money line plus 100. So it's pretty much a pick them. Um, I'm going to stick with Jailton Almeida here. Uh, I do think that he gets it done. I think he's just a little bit more athletic. And Curtis Blades hasn't really fought a wrestler yet. So I am going to play that minus 118. Uh, but, man, if I'm just going to look for just a little bit more juice, I'm like, man, where is a little bit of the action? And um, I still think with Curtis Blade's wrestling background, man, I just don't think it's going to be as easy to submit uh, him as as some might think. And Jelton Almeida by submission is plus 350. Jelton Almeida at TKO is plus 470. Um a guy in Curtis Blades who does end up getting hit with some big shots. Uh, not to say that Jelton M.A. is going to come out and look the box by any means. But uh, who's to say he doesn't hit Curtis Blades with a big shot, follow up with a takedown, and, and maybe land some ground and pound? Um, I think for me, that plus 470, 
might be worth a little, maybe worth a little five ski. Just just throw at it just to, to see if I can get a little action on that. Just get a little bit more juice. I am going to play Jailton Almeida money line just because, hey, that, that's a good enough line for me to where I'm confident enough in the fight to where I think he can get it done. But that Jailton Almeida KOTKO plus 470, I think that's going to be worth a look for some people. All right. All right. Me and D Rose both on the Jailton Almeida possibly inside the distance uh so up next we are on the main card now nice uh uh we do have Piotr no mercy on taking on uh the, the kung fu kid D-Rose. uh <laughs> song your dong blonde we've got a blonde dong this week and uh dude dong's bigger than yawn dude i guess i expected them to be relatively the same size but Man, I, I, you know, earlier in the week, I was like, you know, you dong via decision. Now I'm like, dude, if if Song is able to crack him like two good times, might put Peter Yan out and it wouldn't surprise me one single bit. But uh, give me Song Yadong to win this fight via decision this week. Currently odds for this fight are minus 122 for Peter Yan and plus 104 for Song Yadong, dude. So, Looks like odds have flipped. Um, Song Yedong to win this fight, three or decision, plus 160. Song Yedong to win this fight by knockout is plus 500, and I don't think that's an awful play if I'm going to be honest. But give me Song Yedong to win this fight. I like the three or decision at plus 160. Which way are you going here, D-Rose? Um, yeah, for me, I, oof. man, I've gone back and forth in this fight. I've told you a gajillion times I'm a Song Yedong fan. And uh, but and I do feel I do feel that Peter Yan is going to win this fight, man. I think in terms of betting wise, I don't know, dude. I just I I, I don't have a strong I don't have a strong call because I could see uh I could see Yan winning the fight by decision. I could see uh Song Yudong winning the fight by decision. I mean, I do not have a strong feel for this fight at all. I'm just not going to lie. Um, I I'm going to probably. Uh, not gonna lie, I'll probably end up hedging this fight. Uh, <laughs> I, I would not be surprised if I end up putting it in a parlay with Peter Yan the win and putting another parlay with Song Yudong the win and uh, and hedging my bet. That's how much of a coin flip of a fight I think this is, just because in terms of their, their styles, I do think Yan, Yan needs to win, man. So if I gotta think anybody's gonna win, it's gonna be him, and then. If I got to think, you know, Song Yudong, he's super hard to finish. So uh, I got to think Yan's going to win by decision. So at plus 145, I mean, at that point, you know, I might as well just play the money line at minus 122. So just uh, just hard plays in this fight in general, man. It's just really tough to call. All right. All right. I am on uh, Song Yudong. I, I think he wins. I think he wins. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. For sure, it won't be the last time. Up next, we do have Gilbert Dorino Burns, a plus 138, and he is going to be taking on Jack Della Madalena, a plus 164. D-Rose, I think me and you were both on the same side here this week in uh, thinking that Jack Della was probably going to finish Gilbert Burns uh, here this week. Uh, Gilbert Burns, just a little bit older now, gave it all in the Comzot fight. Chin may be a little suspect now. I like... Uh, Jack Della Maddalena round uh, one or two at, is uh, plus 210. Jack Della Maddalena by KO is plus 160. Or if you want to look under that popular section over there on FanDuel, Jack Della Maddalena KO round one or two is plus 240. I don't think he's going to submit Gilbert Burns, but hey, you know, you could be safe. But uh, I like Gilbert. I mean, I like uh, Jack Della Maddalena to get Gilbert Burns out of there in uh, one of the first two rounds uh, tomorrow night. D Rose, which way are you going here? Um, hey, I will say that Jack Della Maddalena did end up getting a submission against Randy Brown. Randy Brown, a guy who is a uh, who is a jujitsu uh, but special. You to be a fair, he did Molly Wop the fuck out of him first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, but but to to that point, that exactly, you know, he ended up hurting him on the feet, and then then taking him out with a sub. Who's to say that, you know, he wouldn't do that against Gilbert Burns? Um, Is he frozen? Know, I, I, think, I do think the knockout comes, but um, hold on, D Rose. I think 
Yeah, like you froze for just a second. Am I good now? Yeah, yeah, like you're good now. But okay. uh, like you were t- talking about, like uh, who's to say, like he doesn't, like, uh, like, um, like uh, get, get the, the submission. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. Who's to say he doesn't get a club and stuff? Well, because if you look at the odds, Jack Della Maddalena submission round one or two plus twenty nine hundred. That sounds Oof. like a crazy bet. That, that sounds like a crazy bet that you would play. Um, just throwing that out there for peeps, because as I said, Jack Della Maddalena is capable of that. But I do think that he ends up getting the uh, the the knockout there, and I'll probably end up playing. I feel like round one or two. I feel like that's going to be um, that's going to be a play. I'm probably just going to end up playing for the most part. Uh, Jack Della Maddalena money line minus 164. Definitely going to put that in parlay piece. Um, I will play the round one or two, but something almost kind of tells me, man, that Gilbert Burns is going to try to come in here and do a lot more wrestling, try to slow down the fight. And uh, I think he could end up kind of slowing it down. JDM does enough to win, but uh, Gilbert kind of does enough to survive. So you can get JDM by points at plus 300. It's not a terrible play, but uh, but yeah, I think I'm probably just going to stick with the uh, either the the round combos, maybe in a long shot parlay of the KOTKO, or uh, I'll stick with them playing on there at a minus one sixty four in a parlay. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I hate the money line. I like the minus one sixty four. It's not really too much for my broke ass to parlay. Uh, crazy parlay, Madalena by sub and O'Malley by sub. Lush, if you play that, good, good luck, dude. Good luck, man. I, you, you might have bigger balls than I, than I personally do, man. <laughs> so, uh, so up next, we do have uh, another fighter that I missed. We do have uh, Kevin Holland, a minus one thirty-two. Uh, Michael Vinnen Page, a plus one hundred eight. Uh, yeah, this was a fun face-off. Michael Vinnen Page did his little thing, raised his little snake. And then the trailblazer, Kevin Holland, the snake strangler this week, caught it and shut that shit down, D Rose. <laughs> Michael Venom Page couldn't help but to laugh because that's the first time that's happened that that the Texas snake strangler shut down his little uh his little uh taunt there. This is one D Rose that I personally have a hard time betting on. I just kind of want to sit back and stay away. You know how I feel about the trailblazer. I love Kevin Holland, dude. I think he's uh, probably one of the most entertaining people t- to watch fight. Is he the smartest person mm, when it comes to fighting? Probably not. You know, he's had multiple opportunities to win sometimes, and he just does the opposite of what he needs to do to win. And he ends up going to a split decision, or he ends up just, just losing, dude. So give me Kevin Holland to – uh to win this fight via decision against Michael Venom Page. But, uh, yeah, I don't really have any bets uh, on this fight. And if I did, it would probably just be like the over uh, just to be safe. But, yeah, I don't really feel too confident on this fight. D-Rose, which way are you going here, man? Um, I mean, the you know, just as far as style-wise, I mean, it is a uh, it is a very tough matchup. Um, and I, for me, I still – think that Kevin Holland IQ wise just ends up making some some bad decisions in the octagon man uh that end up kind of you know preventing him from getting the win and I think MVP is coming in here with a point to prove and I think really it's just a good matchup for MVP because I think Kevin Holland is going to be willing to stand in trade even though uh Kevin Holland does have the uh submission ability if he is to get it to the ground uh MVP does have a uh, sneaky takedown defense people don't realize that about him but uh, but man, I mean, MVP. You look at the, you know, he sized up well against against Kevin Holland. I thought Kevin Holland was actually gonna be a little bit bigger. So uh, seeing them kind of eye to eye, I think as far as the distance management and stuff like that, I think uh, I think MVP will be able to get that under control. I am going to go money line with him being the the dog at the plus one at or at plus one ten right now. That's a, plenty enough juice for me to squeeze and try to uh, try to get a little bit out of that. But I do agree with you as well. In a separate parlay, I will be playing that over two and a half. Uh, you can get that at minus 180 right now. I think Kevin Holland's super tough. I don't think MVP is going to get the knockout there. If he does, it'll probably be late. But 
that money line at plus 110 is juicy enough for me. And that over two and a half at minus 180. Uh, yeah, I think that's a that's that's a perfect way to go. Fair enough, fair enough. So D Rose on MVP, Michael Venom Page as the slight dog. I am on the favorite, Kevin Holland. I just need to see MVP in the UFC before I B L I E V E. If you catch what I mean. I mean, are we really doing a spelling bee here, or <laughs> like? Hey man. hey man it's 11 15 on a friday night you know why not, why not? Yeah. <laughs> uh well, anyway well, anyway well, uh co co main event of the evening we have uh the god of war benoit saint denis the french special forces uh yeah that guy uh he's going to be taking on dustin the diamond Poirier, up there you know shaved head you know can't be Doing so long quality this week, as the Rose calls it. Uh, man, BSD, whew, just the size difference. And it looks like this fight's going to happen, D Rose. Wasn't sure it was going to happen because the, uh, you know, suspected staph infection on uh, BSD's head. But, you know, looks like no issues here. Currently, odds for this are a plus 168 for Dustin the Diamond Poirier and a minus 210 for Benoit Saint Denis. Personally, D Rose, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. On FanDuel, you go to the round props. Uh, I like this Benoit Saint Denis round one, two, or three at plus 100. I personally think he gets uh, Dustin out of there in one of the first two rounds, but I'll take one, two, or three at plus 100. I think Benoit uh, Saint Denis finishes Dustin this week. Uh, I know you're the opposite way. I want to let people know why. And what do you think about this fight, my guy? Uh, yeah, I think the fight's awesome. And I think as far as the only reason why I don't think BSD gets to finish is I think if you just go over the uh, the resumes of the two, you know, as far as who they fought in the OC so far. And then I just think for BSD to go from Frivola to Poirier, I know you could say that, hey, you know, Dustin lost by head kick in his last fight and, you know, he's getting a little bit older. But, man, I still think that's just a big jump for BSD to make, uh, to not have like maybe like a fight or two in between, maybe like a Dan Hooker or a Jalen Turner, somebody like that to kind of Brad Riddell, somebody like that, Rafael Fazeev, somebody kind of get him warmed up before getting into the top tier of the division. I just think it's just a big jump up for him, man. And I think uh, Dustin requested this fight to be five rounds. I think he did that for a reason and i think he did that because uh bsd's really never been five rounds and he believes over the the five round period is where the better fighter is going to win so for me i think there's going to be a lot of juice for uh dustin poirier four or five decision you can go to round props and go to alternate round betting if you do that for dustin poirier you can get it at plus 440 right now so I think if if he's able to kind of draw the fight out late, I think that's where he's really going to be able to uh, take advantage and be able to uh, be able to win the fight. And I think if uh, he's able to bring uh, BSD maybe in some uh, into some muddy waters and able to drown him a little bit uh, with that pressure late in the fight, uh, you know I want to be able to make sure I can catch a late finish. But let's uh, I'm gonna go Dustin Poirier four or five a decision at plus four forty. I'm doing it strictly for the line, man. I'm doing it strictly for the line. I, I love that line at, at plus 440, and uh, I'm not too mad at that plus 168 for a Dustin either. I, and I, I'm, I'm feeling good about the dogs this week. Brother, you're muted. All right, we uh, the Rose is on the the dog and Dustin the Diamond Poirier, and I'm on the favorite Benoit Saint Denis. It is co. I mean, it is main dude. I am so confused now. I said it perfectly while I was muted, and then I hear brother, you're uh, you're muted, and then I just I, I can't talk now. But anyway, it is main event time. Uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley taking on Marlon Chito Vera number two. If y'all haven't already, do your boys a favor. And hit that thumbs up button for us over here. Breaking down these fights late on this Friday night. 
up to weigh in uh, first, Marlon Cheeto Vera look, or actually to weigh in, uh, I think he was last. Dude, look how terrible Cheeto looked on the scale this morning, dude. Just look, just dead, yeah. Uh, I mean, he definitely looked a little bit concerned. Yeah, yeah, he looked a little bit concerned about making weight. Yeah, on the other hand, Sugar Sean O'Malley up there looking professional as he always does. Uh, as they are facing off, keep in mind that Sean O'Malley like has his hands like deep in his pocket so he's like crouched down a little bit sean uh, is probably like a solid two three inches taller than cheeto uh d rose i uh i played it earlier dude um yeah i like sean o'malley round two knockout uh the the combo on here uh round two round three knockout sean o'malley on fanduel is uh plus 700 personally i like that um yeah, dude, I know Cheeto never been finished, but he clearly had a terrible weight cut. And, uh, dude, Sean O'Malley's got power, dude. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are just like, nah, he's just precise or he's like a sniper. But the dude has power for 135 pounds, dude. He's He, like, sleeps dudes. He finishes dudes that's never been finished, dude. So I'm going to just – I'm sticking with my gut. I think Sean O'Malley ends up sleeping Cheeto Vera. As I said, I like that round two, round three prop, but round two in specific, plus uh, 700 for the round two, round three prop. But if you want to be like me and uh, win a bunch of money over here this weekend, uh, the exact the exact uh, round two knockout for Sean O'Malley is plus 1,300 on FanDuel. That's the way I'm going. Round two knockout, Sean O'Malley. Which way are you going here, D-Rose? Uh, yeah, I mean, I still like Sean O'Malley to get it done here. I still think that, uh, you know, that money line minus 265 may be a long parlay, but, uh, oof, it's just, it, it's a tough, the minus 265, I mean, it's a tough squeeze. So, uh, for me, I'm still looking for that, uh, for that decision. As you guys know, I, I'm, I'm normally there for the, for the decision king. And, uh, man, I still think just Cheetah's reputation of not getting finished. Um, I think Sean's going to come out and try to make sure that he doesn't uh, more or less blow his wad early against Cheeto because he knows that's kind of where Cheeto tends to thrive is, is late. So I think you're going to see Sean kind of more pace himself over the, over the first couple of rounds. I would not be surprised if this fight is a little bit slower than people are anticipating, but I would, I would like that. That Sean O'Malley by decision at uh, plus one twenty five, and uh, and honestly, as far as the the over, the over four and a half is uh, minus one fifty two. I actually really like that a lot. Um, I know we were talking about some round props and stuff like that earlier. Um, I might even do like a round prop parlay, and that might be one of the ones that I put in there because that over four and a half, I I think that's very much uh, I think that's very much in play there. All right, all right. So D Rose likes the Sugar Sean O'Malley via decision prop. Uh, I I personally think that he finishes Cheeto this week. I know Cheeto never been finished, but I feel it happening. I feel it's going to happen. Uh, Lush says uh, if one of you gets a clean sweep on a pay per view for Pick Champ, is that five beans? Lush, I w- I would say maybe, but it only applies to me for getting the bad beans. So, uh, no, (laughs) no. (laughs) Three is the max that I will eat for a clean sweep. (laughs) D Rose is like, yeah, I'll eat 10 because mine are all good. (laughs) (laughs) I love pomegranate and tutti frutti. Yeah, uh, Cheetah looks upper body heavy. uh, Game of distance for Sean. Possibly uh, Daniel Aker saying round four KO. Uh, Here's my parlay builder if anyone cares. Is uh, five stars is 100% confidence. One star is not confident. I appreciate you, Lush. Thanks for dropping that in there and helping out the chat. With that being said, uh, Amabayev and our uh, my five stars are Asu Amabayev and O'Malley. Uh, four stars are Marino or Marino, <laughs> Moroz, uh, Despain, and Gamrot. Uh, three stars are Pereira, Phillips, and Barber, Almeida, Madalena. Page and Saint Denis. So it looks like Lush is really confident on uh Sugar Sean O'Malley this this week, dude. All right, all right. Uh let's see. Uh what's what was Ned's injury? Uh I guess his sh- shoulder, shoulder injury, injury against, right? coming off the ball. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I guess that's what he's asking. Uh, by the way, my probability picks record is uh, fourteen dubs and two draws. That's not that's not too bad, Blush. That's not too bad, brother. Uh, he was a little content, uh, and then he was a title contender, and now he's an underdog. Yeah, uh, you, you know he's 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 a little bit older now, been to the top. You know what more could you ask for from old Dorino? You know they're kind of giving him to a contender, seeing if the contender can beat him, take his spot. But with that being said, D Rose, uh, it's time for dude, uh, the fight game moves so fast, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might be your picture might be frozen. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, uh, it's time for the change to the cheddar, D Rose. The time where we try to turn what change me and you have into some cheddar that we uh, are able to put back into our bank accounts. How we, how me and you personally bet is betting. You know, five, ten, twenty-five dollars. You know, pretty much the maximum I've ever seen. I, you've sent me like a seventy-five dollar bet once. And I don't think you end up even hitting that, did you? No. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's like I I try to keep it under fifty dollars for anything that I bet fifty dollars. Like, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like fifty dollars is like the max that I'll bet on anything. So with that being said, I'm going to give you the bets that I've made this weekend, and then at the very end, I've got uh, two parlays, five dollars to win. I think two hundred or something, and then like a thousand. 500 so with that being said it is time for the change to cheddar all of my personal bets and picks so we're going to start off with my prelim parlay d rose i'm trying to i built a prelim parlay that will pay for your pay-per-view uh and maybe even a dinner while you're watching the fights so with that being said let's get into it it is a five leg a plus four thousand eight hundred and eighty four it is Marina Moreau's round one or two submission at plus 490. Ro- Robellus the Spain round one knockout at minus 165. Uh, the uh, Mikhail Olszejczyk versus uh, Michelle Pereira fight to start round two at minus 290. Uh, Mateus Gamrot straight up at minus 450. And Jelton Almeida round one or two, don't matter how, at plus 225. Five bucks on that will win you $249.20. So if we hit that, that'll pay for our pay-per-view and um, my five guys that I'm going to be eating when I'm watching the prelim. So that's one that I'm hoping for. Another one, uh, I put $10 on this four-leg here, uh, plus 222. Rebellos to Spain, money line, minus 335. Matus Gamrot, money line, minus 450. Benoit Saint-Denis, money line, minus 210. And Sugar, Sean O'Malley, money line, at a minus 265. 10 bucks. To win thirty two twenty seven, not anything crazy. A little account builder, if you will, you know, for next week. You know, at the end of the day, this one is a little bit better, I guess. And I did put a little bit more on it. Uh, it is a three leg, a plus two fifty eight. It is Matus Gamrot money line minus four fifty. Gelton Almeida minus one eighteen. Jack Della Montalena minus one seventy. Twenty five bucks on that to win eighty nine sixty six. How you feel on that one, D Rose? Because I know you're on all the same people. So yeah. Yeah, all, yeah, no, all, I think that's a yeah. All no, just money that's, line. That's a good call. Do we yep. do we bring do we do we do this? Do we do we bring this back here, dear? <laughs> oh gosh, I don't, I don't want. I don't. I, I would hate to be the laughing stock of uh. I, I would hate to be the laughing stock again, but but hey, if we can uh, if we can maybe get something cooking up here. Dude, Maybe that's plus two fifty eight. Uh, that's plus two fifty eight. Three leg, minus four fifty, minus one eighteen, minus one seventy. Dude. Yeah. No, I mean you're. <sighs> no, I mean you're right. That's a hell. That that's a hell of a play. But but shit, I don't want to try to curse it I, by by <laughs> putting the ladder on there. We might need to call it something different. The the <laughs> the the building blocks or something. I mean, we, we might have to rebrand this thing somehow because I don't I don't want to stay or challenge <laughs> the stay or challenge. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The block builder something. I mean, we, we need something that's not going to be called the ladder. We do not need any of that curse hanging on to, to what we are trying to win now. <laughs> Lush is laughing. Yeah, yeah so, we don't uh, need any of that. Don't need any. Yeah, of that. I. I personally like this one. Twenty five bucks to win eighty nine sixty six. Uh, yeah, I feel good about this one. I probably have more bet this weekend than I have in the past few weeks, but 
you know, it is a pay-per-view. Ho I'm hoping that I can win something. Uh, and then our two change to cheddar, our $5 to win something massive is this one right here. $5 to win $212.37. It is a seven leg uh, plus 4,147. It's Marina Murrow's round one or two. Robelos to Spain round one or two. Um, Michel Pereira versus Ola Shejuk to start round two. Um, a Matus Gamrot three or decision minus 310. Jelton Almeida money line. Uh, the Gilbert Burns versus Jack Della fight to start round two. That's minus 310. Uh, and then Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint Denis to start round two as well at minus 330. Five bucks on that to win 212. I try not to be too biased in my in my what I'm actually betting my money on, D Rose, because I would like to win and I know I want people to win. So if I just put it to start a certain round, then I have no bias, right? <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, you would think, but, but but people don't think that all the time. And then the last one, y'all. Uh it's a nine leg, so it'll be two parts on the screen. So uh, I'll get the first eight legs to you. And then the last leg, will, and then what the payout is, will be on the bottom. So the last one, change of cheddar, is going to be a five dollars to win fifteen hundred sixty-two dollars. But it starts out uh, nine leg. It is plus thirty-one thousand one hundred forty-three. It's Marina Moreau's money line. Abu Am uh, Asu Amabayev money line. Uh, Rebello to Spain round one or two. Uh, the Michael fight. To uh, start round two at minus two ninety, Matus Gamrot money line, Jelton Almeida round one or two, Jack Della Madalena money uh, money line, BSD round one two or three, uh, and the last leg on that is plus seven hundred. Sugar Sean O'Malley KO round two or three, five bucks on that to win one thousand five hundred and sixty two dollars. And the good thing about that is if we make it all the way to the end. I know FanDuel is going to be offering us a terrible cash out option that I will, will not take. And I'm like, let this shit ride on the plus 700 prop to close it out at the end of the night, baby. And then when it loses, I'm going to be like, fuck, why didn't I take the $200 cash out? Because <laughs> I got greedy and wanted to uh, to win 1500 instead. So uh, let's see. Uh, Justice, I use Caesars app. I usually, uh, usually great odds. Parlay two people. Great round uh, type of stoppage. You get like ten thousand time odds. Yeah, that's what I do for for uh, for Fanduel. I hit like a one dollar bet for like twenty two seventy six. That's what's up. That's what I try to do, brother. You know, because when it comes to betting a lot of money, I don't bet hundreds over here, and a lot of people do, and I I just I, I can't afford. It. I would rather win hundreds from betting like five ten. All right, D Rose, you sent me two parlays, brother. Um, do you, do you want the small one or the big one first? Like the one with. Like the less legs or the more legs first? Oh, uh, you can do the three leg first. All right. So up first, the Rose, break it down, brother. Uh, yeah. So this is one of the ones that I was talking about with Asu Amabayev. I am pretty confident in that. So, uh, and I, I could have put I could have put ten on there to really uh pay for the pay per view, but I wanted to kind of uh maybe see if I can get a little something, just a lineup, so I could maybe play one or two lines on the pay per view with with the winnings here. So. Uh, soon I'm a buy of a submission round one or two. Michelle Pereira money line, and uh, I think Metallic Gamrot. I think he gets it done by decision here. But uh, if I get a, a decent cash out there, let's say if it's like thirty bucks or so, hey, I, I ain't gonna be mad about it if uh, if the option is there. But um, but I I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the uh, stick with it. I ain't, I ain't gonna cash out because. You know, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be too much. But nah, but let's go dude, ahead your cash out, dude. Your max cash out. Be like twenty five uh, bucks, maybe. Yeah, dude, max, max thirty bucks. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, so this is just a little, this is a little builder here, but this is kind of like my my long shot parlay here, and uh, try to put some that little eight leg here. Got a, a Sue Amabayev money line, uh, Michelle Pereira money line. Got Kyler Phillips money line. You're frozen, D Rose. I got Kyler Phillips money line. So. I don't know if you can hear me. One, all the money. Um, uh, hold, well, all right, you, you are back. Me? Yeah, now now you're back. I okay. got Kyler Phillips money line. Okay, yeah, my my connection is kind of tapping out there for a second, but oh no, it's happening again. <laughs> No, 
let me help Dero's out here. Oh no, I don't know what happened to old Dero's. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me help D-Rose on his uh on his uh parlay here. It is an eight leg. It is a plus five thousand five hundred and four. Asu Amabaya money line, Michelle Pereira money line, Kyler Phillips money line, Matus Gamrot money line, Jelton Almeida money uh, line. Gam- <laughs> Jack Dylan Modelino money line, Michelle Pereira money line, and Dustin the Diamond. Poirier money line five bucks on that to win 280 bucks so hopefully uh d ropes can smash that one uh, out of the park uh you know not feeling too hot about the last leg of that but you know it is what it is we are going head to head um yeah i'm not sure <laughs> not sure what's happened with uh with all d rose so with that being said we will uh I will show you the cards for the weekly predict the fight game real quick. Still uh, looking for some blasters, which I haven't found. So uh, if you predict the fight correctly this weekend, you're going to win this giant stack of cards on Monday for, uh, for my members. So with that being said, I'll get my camera flipped around here and I will show you the weekly predict the fight cards. It's 15 cards this week, and uh, I'll show you where to go for my members. This is, once again, for my members only. So if you would like to win these cards, become a member here on the Golden Octagon. And if you would like to do that, I'll show you how. So card number one this week is going to be Kayla Chukagian from 2023 UFC Don Russ. That's going to be an autograph. Autograph number one this week. We do have Macy, the future barber, Red Wave from 2023 Prism. Rookie Jack Della Maddalena, Red Wave from 2023 Prism. Rookie Hyper Jack Della Maddalena from 2023 Prism. We've got a 2023 Optic uh, Kevin the Trailblazer Holland here. We've got 2023 Prism uh, Curtis Razor Blades. That is a Hyper. Uh, we've got Piotr No Mercy Yon, a Fearless Disco from 2023 Prism. Our uh, numbered Sugar Sean O'Malley. It's going to be two twenty-eight of two ninety-nine on the uh, Chronicles two thousand twenty-three Sean O'Malley. Uh, we have a silver two thousand twenty-three Prism Sugar Sean O'Malley. We do have a purple Optic from two thousand twenty-three, uh, not numbered two thousand twenty-three Optic Dustin the Diamond Poirier. That is your blaster purple uh, from two thousand twenty-three Prism. We do have the diamond, Dustin Poirier. It's going to be out of 175. Blue prism for the diamond uh, from 2023 Chronicles. We've got Pedro, the young Punisher, Munoz. Yeah, 2023 Chronicles, Pedro Munoz, Illusions out of 99, four of 99. Uh, Looks like D-Rose might might have popped back in here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened, D Rose. <laughs> My connection was fucking up, but we good now. And then um, we do have a patch from 2023 Select out of 99 for the Young Punisher Pedro Munoz. And finishing out, we've got Rafael dos Andres 2023 Prism out of 99 and a autograph for Rafael dos Andres. Uh, that is from 2023 Chronicles. So one more time. Uh, Rafael dos Anjos autograph, orange prism, Pedro Munoz patch, Pedro Munoz blue illusions, Dustin the Diamond Poirier blue prism, purple from Optic, silver sugar Sean O'Malley prism, uh, out of 299 Chronicles Sean O'Malley, uh, Piotr Jan, I forgot the dude's name looking right at him, Piotr Jan, fearless, <laughs> Curtis Razor Blades, hyper. Uh, and then Kevin Holland Silver, Jack Della Hyper, Jack Della Red Wave, Macy Barber Red Wave, and Kayla Chukagian as a second autograph in the lot this week. So 15 cards. If you can guess the fight correctly this week, then you will have a chance to win. And if you can get in the tie, then you get in a duck race to win. And if you would like to win, the cards on um, that I just now showed you this week, 
Uh, let me show you how to do so. So, new channel. Once again, uh, you do have to be a member here on the channel. So, if you are not a member here on the channel, all you have to do is da, 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 click right here, join, and it is five bucks a month. And then for the members, uh, check on the community tab and just like here like it was last week and the week before and the week before that like it always is uh it'll be just like this the fighters will be a uh, picture of the fighters will be right here and then i will ask you guys to um you know predict the fight as i always do give some examples and whoever guesses it correctly will uh win the lot if there is a tie then we will have a duck race uh for who actually wins it so we only win we only have one winner and sometimes we don't have a winner at all because you guys don't predict uh the fight right <laughs> uh because that's what happens it's hard to predict fights correctly so with that being said the fight to predict this week is going to be the main event sugar sean o'malley versus marlon chito vera so for my members keep an eye out on that community tab that i just now showed you after the stream today um, and if you would like to win this stack of cards, uh, you know, just put your prediction in the fight round method and obviously the winner. And, uh, either if you, if it's a decision, the score, and, uh, if it's a finish, the time, I only use those to try to defeat a tiebreaker. But if we have a winner, you'll win all those cards and I'll ship them out to you free of charge. But once again, that's only for my members, but yeah, uh, that was all of our predictions uh, prelims to main event. That was our bets that we have made, D-Rose. Some solid bets. I'm super excited for these, uh, for this fight card, dude. Showed you the weekly predict the fight game. And somehow we did all that in an hour and 20 minutes. I feel like we've been here like two weeks. <laughs> and we've been here an hour and 20 minutes. Part of the pre-show prep, too. Part yeah, of it with that's, that. That's that's probably what it was because that actually uh, I like is that added the, uh, like, like another extra twenty minutes, uh, the ghost of the rest. Yeah, dude, it's mm -hmm. like and the odd part was it's like you would pop in like every like other like other words. So I just kind of like went through the rest of your parlay with you, uh, Michael. Adam got here late. What's up? Appreciate you stopping by, Michael. Uh, where are the new tops coming out? They will be out. I think March twenty, uh, March twentieth, I believe. Or March 27th. Yeah, one of the two. So, once again, one more time. Uh, D-Rose's big parlay this week um, is a $5 to win 280 But he also does have one more, $7 to win 51 uh, My giant one this week is this $5 to win 1500 That starts off, uh, that is a nine-leg is a plus 31,143 and ends off with those two and ones that me and D Rose feel pretty confident on. It's this one right here. Feel good on it, D Rose. We should hit it. Should have at least 8966 in my account uh early Sunday morning. At least hopefully. Uh <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. I have at least 8966 in my account uh, Monday morning. Uh, yeah. So with that being said, D-Rose, uh, post fight tomorrow night, yes, no, possibly. We're going to have two five-rounders, so it might be a late one. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's that's definitely uh, – I'm, I'm down for it if you are, but, but, uh, but it's something we'll, we'll definitely talk about. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. So I guess you can expect this here tomorrow night after the fights, at least to give you our immediate thoughts, because, you know, that's what we like to do after pay-per-views. But yeah, appreciate all y'all for stopping by. If y'all haven't already, do us a favor, hit that thumbs up button for your boys over here. Uh, and if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. We're here every single Wednesday breaking down UFC fights. And me personally, I'm here every single Friday. Change the chatter, uh, giving you my final picks and plays. And I think moving forward, I'm going to open it up so everyone can watch it, but I'm going to leave the chat members only if it's not a pay-per-view. So that way, I don't like feeling like I charge people for my picks because I feel like, dude, it's it's fights. How 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 can you how can you charge people for you know your your place? So that's not really what my goal was. It was for the cards. So. I'm going to let everyone watch them from uh, from now on. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, me and D-Rose will catch y'all here. <laughs>
<laughs> tomorrow night after uh after the fights uh and we'll catch y'all right back here or i'll catch y'all back i'll catch y'all back here monday for the recap and me and d will catch y'all right back here wednesday for the golden octagon mma podcast ready to do it all again next week d rose pretending like he's tim welch <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness all right y'all it's late i gotta get off here my name is matt d rose on that cyber screen we appreciate all y'all for stopping by we'll catch y'all later peace <laughs>